fuel cells let's see about that right okay so now people what happens is that you know uh in in thermal plants what do you do you you have some fuel right so you burn it okay that gives you heat energy right you are you are in a power plant let's see right so you burn some fuel that will produce some energy you use that heat to do what you use that heat to convert let's say water into steam that steam then turns a turbine and the turbine ultimately ends up generating electric energy way to inefficient yes right it's way too inefficient and it's also a major source of pollution because you're burning fossil fuels isn't it right okay now the point is that you know uh we thought of you know instead of going the normal way that is the you know a uh, chemical energy of fossil fuels first converted for converting water into high pressure steam and then that being utilized to you know move the turbine to produce electricity we thought right now we have become engineering wise advanced enough advanced enough to produce galvanic cells galvanic cells in such a way that look in galvanic cells you know what happens there are electrodes there are some electrolytes there are some substances something keeps getting consumed right that is what happens in galvanic cell right remember the copper and zinc example uh in the very very beginning daniel cell a type of galvanic cell zinc was getting consumed and becoming zn2 plus copper 2 plus ions were getting consumed and becoming copper solid all of that right now we notice that you know in the daniel cell what will happen is as the ion concentration changes of zn2 plus and co2 plus over time the e cell of the the emf of the cell will start to reduce right and eventually it will come to a point where the cell is like okay i cannot work anymore because the ions are no longer there right in in the required amount we figured that you know we have become engineerically advanced enough that first we can develop such galvanic cell in which we can keep adding stuff or maybe you know removing the unwanted stuff so that to keep in going keep it going again and again that was one thing then again we also figured out that you know how about we convert the energy of these fossil fuels used in industry like hydrogen gas methane gas alcohols etc etc directly into electric energy so let's skip the part where the first that uh, chemical energy is converted into heat heat energy right the steam that gets created let's skip that part because it was earlier chemical energy to heat energy heat energy to electric energy because the turbine was turned and electricity was generated we are like let's skip the middle step let's go directly from the chemical to the electrical let's use these fuels let's use these fuels to create cells and hence the topic name over there right okay So yeah that is essentially what we have and the most famous of them look people if you go into bachelor master programs right related to this field you'll come across somewhere around 12 to 13 12 to 15 popular fuel cells right but the most popular one of them is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and that is the only category within fuel cells which is in our curriculum right okay so let's let's see about these what do we have hydrogen and oxygen are bubbled through porous carbon electrodes okay hydrogen oxygen are bubbled through porous carbon electrodes we have we have you know from either sides we are doing that so we are inserting two gases from either sides we have porous carbon electrodes in between all of them right what do we have we have concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide naoh solution in between we have that right okay now you have this diagram in front of you do not try to draw it yes i'm being very clear do not try to draw it point number 2 such a diagram will not be required of you to draw in your exams i will say it again you do not need to draw such a diagram in your exam if you go to your ncert you will find a very very simple diagram extremely simple diagram for your exams 
draw that diagram which is there in your NCRT, the simple one. This here is so that we understand it better, right? We don't expect, nobody accepts you to draw 3D structures. Especially in exam when, you know, time is, time is a very scarce commodity. Especially in exam when time is less, nobody expects to draw 3D diagrams. No, so don't even try, don't practice, don't attempt it. Draw the 2D diagrams. That is what boards exam checker will give you mass marks for, right? Whatever is there in NCRT, do not do this. But let's use it to understand though, right? Okay. So as I was saying, oxygen gas, hydrogen gas, inlet, right? Okay. Porous carbon electrodes. Okay, this is what we have over here. Porous carbon electrodes, right? The, the, the yellow bits over there. Okay. They enter it. Okay. We'll, we'll uh, you know, when they enter it, the hydrogen side at least, right? The hydrogen side at least over here, right? The H2, there is platinum, right? Or palladium, fine bits. What happens is this gets converted into 2H plus and releases two electrons in the process. Okay. Those electrons, if you look at the very top, let me use a different marker. Those electrons, if you look at the very top, travel outside and go to the other side, to the other electrode. Okay. Now here, what happens? Wait, wait, we'll talk about it. But let's come back to the H plus story. Now this H plus enters inside, right? You notice this H plus enters inside. But this section over here, is filled with concentrated what? Sodium hydroxide, right? So this H plus combines with the OH minus and forms H2O. Okay, cool. That is also there. Another thing what happens is this side over here. Let's talk about oxygen. So oxygen enters, right? Oxygen enters, right? It consumes the electrons because it's going to reduce. Why? Because hydrogen got oxidized. Hydrogen got oxidized, so oxygen will get reduced, right? And it get reduced to what? Get reduced to what? It gets reduced to OH minus. How do we balance the overall reaction? Let's see about that, right? Okay, so let's look at the reactions over here. This is essentially, you know, uh, what we have over here. So if you think about it, at the anode, as we already discussed, what do we have? Well, we discussed the reaction to be something like, sir, this does not look what you like, what you said, right? So let me elaborate. H2 becomes 2H plus. This is what I told you people, isn't it? Right? Okay. Then what did I tell you? I told you that, you know, 2H plus then combines you with the OH minus does what forms H2O. Get it? Now combine these two. Combine these two. What is the case over here? This and this get cancelled. What do you get? H2 plus 2 OH minus gives you H2O plus 2 electrons. This is what we have, right? Okay. Now, at the cathode, this reaction happened. O2 gets converted into OH minus. Now, we have done this kind of a balancing in redox reactions chapter, right? So I'm leaving the balance to you. I'm leaving all of the equation to you. You have to keep in mind that O2 gets converted into OH minus. The rest of the equation develops or itself, right? You can figure it out. Don't worry, it's nothing big. Now, the finally comes the conclusion. The conclusion is interesting because if you have these two reaction halves, if you have this and if you have this over here and you develop the overall reaction, turns out a lot of things get cancelled out. H2O cancelled out, right? Uh, <coughs> What else do I have over here? H2 is here, all right. O2 is here. Oh my God, one thing I did wrong, right? I did a thing wrong. What did I wrong? What did I do wrong? Tell me about it. Okay. So when I'm combining, combining them, I have to make the electrons disappear, isn't it, right? So I should multiply this by two. So this should be 2H2. This should be 4OH minus. This should be 4H2O. This should be four electrons, isn't it, right? So this is what we get. Now, if we combine them, we'll quickly realize that the electrons cancel out. Get it? Okay. 4H2O will become 2H2O. 2H2O will get cancelled out. And 4OH minus, 4OH minus will get cancelled out further. So we have 2H2 here. We have 1O2 here. Everything else got cancelled out. We have 2H2O on the other end as well. And this is what we get.